Hello everyone, this is my 2011 Toyota RAV4 that I have turned into a micro camper. I've had this car for, I guess, about five years now. I've spent two to three months a year on the road in it, sleeping in it, camping in it, traveling in it. And so by my rough estimates, I've spent about a year of my life in this little vehicle. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my setup, show you how I have everything configured and all figured out. And if you have questions about specific pieces of gear I use, go to suvrving.com slash gear. I'm gonna to touch on some items, but I'm not gonna get into super specifics. But if you go to that website, uh, my website, that page on my website, which I'll have in the video description, then uh, it'll save us a, a lot of time. You can just go there and, and see exactly the, the items that I have. And to cut off some of the comments in advance that I'm sure I'm gonna get, I know people are gonna wonder why don't I just get a van? Because uh, I don't like vans. I'd rather have an SUV. I like driving SUVs. I like the look of, of an SUV more than I like the look of a van or driving a van. And also people are gonna say, oh, they can never spend days or weeks at a time traveling around in one of these, which is fine. You know, if that's the case for you, then, then you know, that's the case for you. But I would just say that um, if you think of it more as a hard-sided tent, then it might be easier. I mean, I've, I've spent the, I spent a lot of nights backpacking and camping in tents much smaller than this. This is larger than a two-person tent, and I have power, food, electricity, I have everything I need in here. It's much more comfortable when compared to a, uh, compared to a tent. And some people always say, why don't you just use a tent? Well, it takes me about five seconds to set this up when I get to a campsite. And that's not the case with a tent, obviously. This is much faster and again, much more comfortable to use than a tent. I'm not judging your personal preferences. If you prefer a tent or a van or a truck or an RV or whatever, more power to you. Uh, this is what I prefer. Let me give you a brief overview of the setup and then we'll get into some more specifics. So this is my setup. I'm five foot 11. There's plenty of space here on, my, on the bed side over here. I have a couple inches to spare. Bed is here, cabinet with some gear is here, dirty clothes hamper here, various miscellaneous storage on the side. Fridge, power station, cargo box, solar panel, and then more storage on the front seat here. And so as far as details go, I guess let's start with the bed. That's kind of the most important part. That's the most fundamental part if you wanna be sleeping in your SUV. The bed itself is a three inch foam mattress. You can see it here. I have sewn a little tube to go around it. I got a sheet from Walmart, sewed it into a tube and stuffed the mattress inside of that. This is a $20 Home Depot mattress. I'll put a link in the description to the video I made about this mattress. I have two sleeping bags. As you can see, it's, it's cold out here. I live in Idaho. I am in Idaho right now. I travel all over the West. That's what the majority of my videos are about. But here I'm in Idaho and it's cold. And so I have two sleeping bags usually when I'm winter camping. This is a 20 degree down sleeping bag. This is about a, I think about a 40 degree synthetic sleeping bag. And sometimes I put one inside the other. Sometimes I just lay one on top of the other. It really depends on how cold it is. Two super cheap, like $3 pillows from Ikea with cheap Walmart pillowcases and then two small little travel pillows. I like having a lot of pillows. I like sitting up and, and reading and watching things and uh, just having multiple pillows gives me more options. One of the main things you need to figure out if you're gonna be sleeping in your vehicle is how to bridge the gap here. So right now it's in driving mode, which means the, the front seat here is about where I would have it when I'm driving. When it's time to sleep, I pull it forward. This is now moved all the way forward, giving me plenty of space here. And so that creates a gap, right? So this seat is just folded down, it creates a gap between the, the top of this back seat and the back of the front seat. And that's where this comes in. This is just a piece of wood from Home Depot. I think it's about two feet by two feet. Pre-cut, I didn't have to cut this, it came this size. And it's just a square. And there's a 
piece of paracord here. So drilled a hole here in that corner, drilled a hole here in this corner. Just a loop of paracord goes up and over and then back down. So now when it's ideally tightened, it's a little bit loose right now, but it stays nice and nice and solid here, bridging the gap right here. Makes it nice to sleep on. The fridge here is a cheap one from Amazon. It's a 12 volt fridge. It plugs into the 12 volt socket right here in the power station. Uh, I got it for about $150. I think normally it's around $200, but I got it on sale. Works just fine. Let me show it to you. It probably won't last as long as the Dometic or Engel fridges, but I mean, it, it has plenty of space. I've been using it for, let's see, seven or eight months now this year, and it works just fine. No complaints, really. This is the Alpacool C20. And then over here, this power station is the Jackery Explorer 1000. I have a 100 watt solar panel. These are the cables coming in from there. This panel here is a 100 watt Renogy solar panel. Charges the Jackery here. This is the Jackery Explorer 1000 normally. Uh, this year I've been using the Jackery Explorer 500, which is the, the next version down from this in terms of capacity. But Jackery gave me this one to, uh, to review and to use. and. So I'm using it and it's great. I, I like it a lot. Often here, I also have several things plugged into the USB ports. I have a little light, I have a fan, then also just charging my phone and my camera batteries and all that good stuff. Right here, this is a little holder I made for, uh, for Ziploc bags. So I have various sizes of Ziploc bags in here, if I can grab one to show you, maybe. Different sizes, gallon, quart, sandwich, snack. Then I also have some trash bags in there. Have a couple of hats hang off, hung off of here. Uh, several things that you see here that I'll show you here, I make and sell on KamchatkaGear.com. This is the headrest hat and helmet holder. Holds hats right there. As of recording this, Kamchatka Gear is on a little bit of a hiatus just because I've been traveling so much, but hopefully sometime when you're watching this or after, soon after, things will be back for sale. And then I have some storage up on top here. Again, I make and sell these. This is the cargo hammock. Got one here, one here. And these are great for bulky items. So jackets are, are usually what I stuff up there. But sometimes I'll also put my pillows up there just to get them out of the way. This thing here I make and sell also. I call that the multi-hanger. It's great for managing cables. So when I am using my USB light, and my USB fan, I can kind of get the cables up and out of the way and reroute them a little bit. On the sides here, as far as curtains go, I have curtains on these two side windows. Like this. I like curtains on the side because I can have these windows down and still get airflow. If you just like stick something in the windows, you can't really crack the window and get much airflow. So I like having the curtains here. And they're hung from some bungee cord. You can see the one end being anchored right there. The other end is anchored on the, on the grab handle there. So basically just a piece of cord run along here. And that's what I hang the side curtain from. This thing is great. This cabinet here. A friend of mine built it. Shout out to Joe from the channel Homesteadonomics. I don't think he's really doing this for people, but I'm showing you this to give you an idea of, of what you could build or have someone else build for you. But definitely go check out his channel, great channel. So I had him make this for me to, to store all of my clothes and some other gear. Each shelf here, each row has two cubbies. So here I have Let's see, I have shirts here, pants and shorts here, underwear and socks here, toiletries there, and then some cooking gear here, and then miscellaneous electronics here. So I guess I'll show you this really quick. Like I, I have a full stove in here. This is a little pot. 
And then this is a stove, a little camp stove. I even have the fuel canister inside here. So very compact setup. I don't cook a lot on my trips. I don't like cooking. I spend anywhere from one night out to about a month out at a time. Just depends on the destination and and uh, you know how long I feel like being out for and how long I'm willing to be away from my wife for. How long we can bear to be apart from each other. I am married. I have a wife and a dog in an apartment. I don't live in this full time, but as I said, I do spend a total of two or three months a year in it. So anyway, this thing is great. Really like this. It's nice to to put things here. Like if I'm drinking something, I can sit the can on the edge here. I can also put things up on top here at the end of the day when I'm trying to organize things. Dirty clothes, hamper right here. Sometimes I will store things like books and atlases and maps underneath there. Over on the side here, headlamp, indoor-outdoor thermometer. And then under here is where I store the rest of the window coverings. So most of them are made out of Reflectix, which you can buy at the, the hardware store. You can buy a roll of it. I put these in the windows. I spend basically all of my time camped on public lands. I'm not urban camping. I'm not stealth camping. I don't care about stealth, but I do care a little bit about privacy. So I have these in the windows here, blocks the view in and out. And then I, I have them for this back window, these two little kind of porthole windows, and then the front windows alongside the front seat. And I lost the Reflectix one that I made for this window. So I have one made out of black poster board that fits there just fine. Black poster board is a really good material to use if you're on a budget here because it's obviously super cheap. A sheet of it is like, I don't know, less than a dollar from, from Walmart. So that's good stuff. And then for the very front window, the, the windshield, let me show you what I use for that. So in the front door, little side pocket thing here, I have one of these. Just a regular windshield screen that folds up to be super compact. Again, you can get this off Amazon. Use this on the windshield. Works great. And I do use all the little nooks and crannies for storage. So here I showed you the windshield screen. I've got bug spray and sunscreen here. I have a little pocket that I made to attach to the grab handle here that I sometimes put a, a can in. I have this thing going in between the seats that holds paper towels. I have this thing that attaches to the headrest. I make and sell these also that attaches or that, uh, that holds a box of tissues. I have various items in here. I have toiletries and a first aid kit. Actually, it's mostly first aid stuff and health stuff in there. On the side here, in the gap between the seats, I store atlases. So this is a, an Idaho state atlas. And then I think, what is this? Montana state atlas. I have maybe 10 different atlases that I rotate out depending on the trip. And then this is a US road atlas. The front seat here is used for storing just whatever items I need handy right now. There's a, a, a backpack. This is my hiking backpack. And then for trash, I hang just a little plastic grocery bag with a carabiner from the headrest post. Right now I have a tripod stored right here, but this is usually in the cargo box on top of the vehicle. And I don't have a ton of water down here now, but I usually have several gallons of water maybe three or four gallons of water just on the floor here. And in addition to the, the big containers, I have some smaller water bottles too. I have a little funnel here, always within reach. This is so that I can refill the smaller water, water bottles from the bigger ones. The funnel makes that much easier. Got sunglasses stored up here. Have a zippered pouch, which you can't really see very well because of the sun. Here we go, it's a little bit better. Anyway, a zippered pouch right there on this 
visor. I put receipts in here. And then I have a couple little glove compartment things that I put various items in. I've got binoculars and a hand scale and a little solar light. And then in the main glove compartment, that's mostly the, uh, the owner's manual for the car and various car documents. For when I'm driving, I have this guy has four USB ports, three 12 volt sockets. Right now it's just powering my phone, which I have set up on uh, a clamp here. The clamp is clamped onto my emergency brake and then the phone is just right here. I recently broke my vent mounted phone holder. Usually it would go right here and so I added this. It's working fine, but I'll be looking for a, another vent one or even a CD, CD player mounted one in the future here. These seat covers are great. I have one on both front seats in my car here. My wife's two front seats in her car both have them on. These are made for dogs. They're $15 on Amazon, something like that. Fantastic seat covers. I really like these. And as I briefly mentioned earlier on the side here, I have miscellaneous storage. This is a 12 volt heated blanket that I can plug into the Jackery. And then I've got some stuff sacks here and then new windshield wipers that I haven't gotten around to, to putting on yet, but they are right there. I don't think I mentioned that this is secured around the seat right here. Let me show you that. Basically there's a strap going around this seat here and another one down here. And so it basically hugs this seat and so it, it stays put really well. I go on a lot of bumpy roads and it's, it's pretty darn solid. Underneath the seat here, this is where I store my shoes. Right here, I have two bins. This is where I store my food. Pretty easy to grab. Various items here. As I said, I don't really cook much on my trips. I don't enjoy cooking. I especially don't enjoy cooking on my trips while I'm camping, so I eat a lot of sandwiches. So the, the fridge is usually full of deli meats and cheeses and things like hummus and, and yogurt, things that I can eat without having to, to cook and that's fine with me. But yeah, I have two of these, one here and then the other one is still down there. I'll just leave that there for now. This is a spray bottle that I use for brushing my teeth and also sometimes for showering. Like if I just want to wash my hair, I'll use this sprayer. And then this is a pee bottle. This is a Nalgene bottle that I use to pee in at night when it's too cold or I don't want to leave the car for whatever reason. I know that toilet is a big thing that people worry about and wonder about. And my fridge is tipping over here. There's nothing in it right now, so it's not really counterbalanced. And I removed the, the bin there that usually helps support it. So let's see if I can set this aside for a minute here show you the uh, the toilet situation. So here I have a little bag of toilet paper. Another bag with toilet paper. No, this one does not have toilet paper. Kitty litter and then plastic trash bags. My toilet is stored underneath the front seat here. This is it. It's a little stool that I modified to be a toilet. I have an entire video about this that I'll link to, but I guess I'll set it up just to show you real quick what it looks like. So here's the stool. Again, I made a video all about this. Go check that out. Very easy to set up. Now I don't use this a lot. I will more often go to the bathroom at a, at a gas station or a fast food restaurant, or in a, a pit toilet or vault toilet at a trailhead. I'll do that much more than I will use this. because so I'd rather just not deal with, with it, you know? I'd rather not deal with getting this out. I'd rather not deal with bagging up and, and then disposing of my waste. I'd much rather just do this. Let me adjust the camera here. So this is the little stool. 
You can use it as a stool just for sitting around camp if you want to. But then also move those straps to the side so that there are just the two straps here. And these two straps basically act as a toilet seat. So you can either dig a hole, put this over the hole and then cover it up. Or I can take one of the plastic bags that was in that other bag that I showed you on the side of the, of the door there and uh, you know, put the bag in here and put the edges around. So you're just sitting on the bag, do your business, tie it up, double bag it. Then I toss it into the, into the, uh, the rooftop cargo box up there so I'm not, I don't have to deal with it. Then when I get to a, a dumpster or something like that, then I'll, I'll dispose of it. I recently went on a 10 day trip up the Oregon coast. I didn't use the toilet once. There were always other places nearby I could use. Always toilets at trailheads, always toilets in gas stations, grocery stores. Um, it's really not hard to find toilets out there. If you stay in one place, if you stay at one campsite for days or a week at a time, then yeah, you're gonna be using the facilities or lack thereof right at your campsite. And so that's when a, a separate toilet solution can be very useful, but otherwise it's not something that I, that I really need to deal with very often. Showers are another thing that people wonder about, they question, and there are several different, I guess, methods that I use. I already showed you the little sprayer. I'll use that, like I said, for my hair, also sometimes for my body. And then um, wet wipes are great for just staying fresh between proper showers so you don't completely reek. Uh, in the meantime. And then I also like to take showers at places like recreation centers and RV parks. At a rec center, it'll cost between five and eight dollars uh, for, a, for a day pass to use the showers. At an RV park, it'll cost between three and six dollars to take a shower. And uh, then of course there are places like campgrounds and, and that kind of thing. But I'm almost always camped on public land, free dispersed camping on BLM land, which is Bureau of Land Management land, or on National Forest land, and so I'm not usually staying in places with, with showers. <laughs> and so I, I, I try to take a shower at an RV park or somewhere similar when I'm passing through town. I'll do that maybe once a week, and then in between uh, that I'll use the sprayer or the wipes, or I have another little shower, a little portable camp shower that I'll show you. It's in here. Very compact. Let me show you how compact it is. So I, I basically made this. I, I put a bunch of different parts together to make this. I made a video about this, so I won't go, to, go into exact details about how I, how I made it. But there's a three liter platypus bottle. So I fill that with water. And if I want to, I can leave it on top of the car. I can strap it down to the top of the car to heat it up if I have sun. And then this is the... Uh, the shower system here, if this will focus. Here we go. So a little valve and a little quote unquote shower head, which is just a two liter soda bottle top with some holes poked into it. So this is very efficient, very efficient use of water and uh, it works really well. And I can hang this up from a tree or I can you know, hang it up from the top here. Sometimes I have kayak racks here to put my kayak on. I took them off right now for winter, but when I have the, the kayak rack things on, I can just clip this to the top of one of those and it's high enough for me. And of course the showering thing really comes down to how comfortable you are with your own stench and how comfortable you are being around other people. I don't really interact with other people on my trips. I like to be out, I like to be in the wilderness. I like to be hiking and fishing and climbing and and kayaking and all that good stuff. And so I don't really mind if I smell bad and I don't meet up with other people, so there's no one else to impress. But when I am camping with my wife, then you know I do try to bathe in some way more often just so we don't stink for each other. The cargo box is great. I love this thing. I have a video about how I attach the solar panel to it. And then uh, I don't know the name of this cargo box. I like it because it is flat topped and so I can attach a rigid solar panel to it. But I bought it used off of Craigslist and any name or marking that was on it is no longer on it. It has long since rubbed off. 
So I don't know what kind of brand it is, but it doesn't really matter. If you want to do a similar kind of thing, just look for a used one that has a, a relatively flat top on it, or a new one, you know. Maybe there's a new one that, that'll work with a rigid solar panel. Up here, I store this. So this is a pop-up shower tent, or privacy tent. I'm not going to set it up right now. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like when it is set up. These are $30 or $40 on Amazon. Pretty compact. And apart from that, I put, what else do I put up here? So right now I have some fishing gear up here, like my waders are over here, my backpack is over here. If I am in more remote areas for a fair amount of time, I will put my trash up here. I'll bag it up, stick it up here. Anything stinky or wet or dirty or muddy goes up here. I really like having this. I, I do prefer something like this to a, um, you know, the, the kind that, that attaches to the hitch. I do have a, a hitch mount here, but I, I don't want to have one of the, the baskets or the little platforms that sticks out. That does affect your angle of attack when you're going in or out of a bump. I mean, I... Nice cow poop right there. I, I always scratch this thing on rocks or on the ground. So if I had something else sticking out of it, I would just destroy that. So again, if that works for you, great. It doesn't work for me for the kinds of things that I like to do. And then as for routing my solar panel in to the vehicle, to the power station, I've tried a couple different ways. Right now, I have it kind of tied off here to keep the slack the slack cable from touching the, the roof of the RAV4. Cable goes in, and one of these things, these, these deflectors, these window deflectors, these are, these are great, so you can roll down the windows and not get rain in your car, but they're also great for, for this kind of setup. So I drilled a hole in here, in the, in the deflector, so this is not drilling a hole in the vehicle. This is just the, the plastic window deflector thing. And then I used a little saw to cut a slit from the edge to the hole so that I could insert the cables in to the hole here. And then I taped the, the slit back up with some black Gorilla Tape, used some silicone caulking to seal up the hole so it doesn't leak. And so that runs in. The, the window here, th this runs in over through the window. So the window is cracked a little bit. It's cracked maybe like a quarter of an inch. And so that does create a little bit of wind noise when I'm driving. But I think that for me, this is the, this is the best option I've come up with and it works really well. And so that cable just goes in and then comes down and then I can connect it to the, to the Jackery right here. On the inside of the windows, I have bug screens I make and sell these and have them secured with magnets around the edge here. Again, KamchatkaGear.com. But again, they may or may not be for sale at the current moment. But the reason I like having these is that I can just get to a campsite. I can, I can roll into a campsite, park the car, and roll the windows down, crawl into the back, and be good without having to get out of the car at all. I don't need to open up the window. Or I don't need to open up the, the side doors to, like, slide those sock type window coverings over. I don't like doing that. I have camped in places that have extreme mosquito and bug issues, and even to open up the door to slip one of those shade sock things over, even that is a, is a no-go. I mean, dozens of mosquitoes would get in, so that is just not something that interests me. But with these, I can just pull into a campsite, roll the windows down, and be good. And I think that just about does it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, so this being a RAV4, the, the spare tire is on the back, which is great. This is a full-size spare tire. One thing I haven't shown you is that I have a basement. This is what I call the basement. I have a ton of gear down in here. So I have a camp chair, another camp chair. I have some more camp fuel. I have a tent. And then this is also where my my emergency and recovery gear is. That's all under there. So stuff I don't need to access super often, but I like to have, you know, or I need to have. That's all down in there. I do have some bear spray in the corner here, right next to my bed. 
Let me know if you have any other questions. I really like this setup. It's gone through different revisions over the years and I'm sure it'll change again to something else in the future. But for now, this is my setup and I really like it. Works really well for me. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumb up, give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I share tips and tricks about how to camp and travel and live out of an SUV for your camping adventures. And this, a lot of the stuff I say also applies to other vehicles, but my focus is really on SUVs. And then on this channel, I also make videos about the adventures I go on in this vehicle, the outdoor adventures that I cover in the mountains and the deserts of the Western United States. So if that sounds interesting, again, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.